Uh, morning. Um, but I, I'm also excited to be here as well. I'm, I'm actually fascinated by this discussion. Um, and I was trying to think as I was preparing for this, you know, what it is that I bring to the table. Um, I, like Elliot, I, I, the only reason I have slides really, um, I love your branding. <laughs> I love the picture, especially with the fluorescent bulb, although maybe it should move into an LED at some point. Um, uh, I'll, I'll, I have a few slides that go into some detail, uh, but I'm really here just to put the branding up. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, happy to talk further and, and look forward to the, the, the substantive discussion. Um, what I bring to the table is I am the government representative, I think, here, the only one. Um, uh, I've uh, been at PTO for about eight years uh, and was there... Uh, during a lot of legislative change, a lot of uh, changes to the system that are very significant. I've, I've been one of the people claiming the biggest change since 1836. Um, uh, previous to that, I bring a corporate perspective. Uh, I worked with a number of companies uh, on all sides of technology. Uh, using the patent system, trying to use the patent system uh, to further their, to grow their company, to further uh, development of technology. There's a very different uh, goals in mind uh, than in the university setting. And I, I love exploring that because I think as I've, I've looked at universities, they've, in many cases, the tech to technology transfer offices have acted more like corporations in tr becoming more sophisticated and managing their portfolios in recent years. I've, I've been in the profession long enough to see Autumn uh, from a very small organization to a very large organization now. And in large part, that is as the universities have become more sophisticated, again, they've acted, they've managed uh, like, uh, like many corporations. It doesn't mean that their goal should be profit and profit alone. Uh, Leslie, I, I enjoyed your, your remarks, I think. Uh, I, I think it's a balance. Uh, for, for universities, and, and that those incentives may or may not be uh, necessarily uh, in, in the corporate interest. Uh, of course, they may. Um, like universities, trying to build a network of support, trying to be identified for particular technologies uh, and therefore draw the best talent, uh, companies also, uh, maybe I would argue more so in recent years, uh, have developed to create a brand and a, a brand that's appreciated, uh, and uh, showing that they're actually driving the technology for it. They are the driver, and that's who you want to necessarily invest with. So maybe some of the dynamics are there, uh, but I think, and looking forward to explore that issue more, um, that balance, uh, it's not just for profit motive. That's certainly true. Um, so let me give a quick snapshot of PTO. Um, I want to... Uh, spend a couple minutes uh, in, my, in my 10 minutes on the importance of the legislative changes, uh, some of the continuing challenges, and then uh, that last bullet uh, I think is open to our, 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 our 45 minutes. Um, PTO today uh, is, is different from when I joined the PTO in 2009. Uh, number one, it's much bigger. Uh, it had to be bigger. Uh, it had to be bigger to get the job done, uh, to be able to as quickly as it can, looking at the best and broadest prior art uh, record uh, that there is, issue quality patents. Um, it, it, there's a lot in there. Um, and it, again, for PTO, it, it's an issue of, of balance. We're never going to do a perfect job. <laughs> uh, there need to be checks on the system. Um, we also are facing an ever-growing uh, body of prior art uh, as we look at, at uh, applications coming in the door. So the challenges for the PTO include keeping up with the prior art, uh, being able to move forward on a, a quick pace uh, because we know that that delay not only devalues the patent for whoever the applicant is, uh, university, inventor, large company, um, but it creates lots of uncertainty in the marketplace. Um, and with the explosion of technology in a lot of different areas, um, that is even more important today than it was 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Um, so PTO had to grow to keep up with the demand, uh, be able to act on applications uh, in, a, in a quick manner. It also had to spread its wings a bit uh, and not just be a, a, a DC, uh, inaccessible uh, organization. Um, so add to the complexity of the system already, uh, the only way to access the system was to come to DC. Um, uh, just in recent years, PTO has created uh, four regional offices, uh, uh, one in every time zone now, um, primarily uh, to uh, hire 
uh, examiners. Uh, we, we were tapping out uh, all the engineering schools on the East Coast, um, it, both in numbers and in quality of examiners. Uh, those who wanted to come to the PTO and stay at least for a few years uh, after we invest uh, quite a bit in them to uh, be able to perform the function. Um, we now have four other spots around the country where we could do that. Um, so that was important for PTO, just the hiring itself. But having those feet in the communities have made PTO a bit more accessible as well. It's provided lots more opportunities for education, lots more opportunities for uh, applicants to understand the patent system, understand when to use the patent system. And frankly, I'm the first to say when not to. Uh, so all, all of those things are very, very important. Um, last is just on the workload bit. Uh, uh, the, the patent system continues to grow uh, in terms of applications filed every year. Um, it, 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 it goes up and down and growing less quickly, uh, but certainly in, in the time that I've been there, there's only been one or two times that it's actually uh, dipped below growth over an annual period of time. Um, I'm not going to go through all of this. This is uh, at least my congressional history. Um, I'm the Director of Government Affairs for PTO. Uh, I did a similar job uh, for the Intellectual Property Owners Association. Uh, that was my corporate experience, or at least part of my corporate experience. Um, I, I worked on the American, what became the American Events Act uh, over uh, from about 2002 to when it was enacted in, in, in 2011. Um, many Congresses trying to address these issues. Now the theme through all of these issues is about balance. Um, there was a concern that uh, the system was outdated. Uh, it, was, uh, it was leaning too far in one direction. Um, and, um, and then certainly the system was not funded. Um, so the AIA tried to address all those issues. That, that's the history from the 108th Congress to the 112th. Uh, we just ended the 114th. We're now in the 115th. I'm not sure what will happen. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, I, I think the environment in Congress is ripe to address um, what some people say the AIA left on the table and didn't do, uh, particularly focused on, on reducing opportunities for litigation abuse and making the system more certain. Um, a theme throughout almost every speech that I give is about legal certainty in the marketplace. Uh, to the extent that PTO is not driving towards that, uh, we're not doing our job. Um, so. Again, the patent litigation reform discussion is about uh, trying to achieve that legal certainty. Um, high quality patents, uh, the best record that is possible, uh, leaving open the opportunity for, with a high bar, for the public to come into the office and say, it's more likely than not that at least one of these claims is not patentable, and be able to, in a post-grant fashion, uh, challenge those. Again, it's about balance. Uh, the AIA, I just hit these big uh, points. It, it did three main things. It modernized the system. Uh, my old boss, Dave Kapos, used to say he created the first 21st century patent system uh, in the world. Um, uh, transitioning uh, the U.S. to a first uh, to file uh, system, uh, aligning it with the rest of the world, putting in a structure that made it simpler uh, and, and uh, provided more legal certainty. Uh, creating these post-grant review proceedings. Uh, there had already been an, an opportunity at PTO. Um, it was not time limited. It was not cost efficient. Um, and it was in front of a single examiner. It wasn't an oppositional uh, uh, proceeding. So the AA created uh, those proceedings. There are mirrors. Certainly, uh, there are some mirrors to the European opposition system. But this was purely a US-born, time limited, uh, uh, more cost efficient, we hope. Uh, I think we're still in implementation, we'll see, um, uh, just a few years away from the bill. Um, but then last, giving PTO the, actually the funds and the certainty in the funds to be able to stand up the post-grant review proceedings, invest in quality, build the IT systems that it needed, uh, really build a, uh, a, an organization that could serve its mission. Uh, I do believe in mission statements as well. Uh, um, we just passed the five-year uh, uh, anniversary of the AIA. but I, I've already referred to it. I th still think we're in implementation. Uh, I think the system is still trying to adjust. I uh, frequently meet with stakeholders of uh, the, the Patent and Trademark Office, uh, mostly on the small uh, end, uh, and, and so some universities that uh, decry the switch to first to better to file, uh, are, are concerned about additional changes in the system, creating more uncertainty. Um, I think we're still implementing, and there's still more that we can do, even outside of legislation. Um, yet, there is a legislative discussion, um, and 
as, as I usually characterize it, it's what some, uh, mostly the high tech companies that I had uh, worked with in my private uh, life, um, say were left on the cutting room floor. The AIA addressed issues that may have been important, but weren't the issues that I was facing uh, in the court. Um, La the last two Congresses looked at a number of things to try to address. Um, and I always talk about kind of the, the trifecta of litigation reforms, which are she fee shifting, uh, heightened pleading, um, and, uh, and limited discovery. Um, all of those were part of a comprehensive reform package uh, that failed to reach any consensus <laughs> over the last two Congresses. Um, I, we now have uh, m many cases uh, in front of the Supreme Court. Uh, specifically, we have uh, the, the T.C. Heartland case, which is looking at an issue that came into this discussion later, venue, uh, dealing with uh, uh, forum shopping, uh, particularly the, what people call the Eastern District of Texas problem. Um, uh, T.C. Heartland will be uh, decided by the, the court uh, the June-July time frame. Um, it will be a trigger for legislative um, uh, activity. Um, I think that's probably where it starts, and we don't go back to a comprehensive reform. So happy to talk about all of those things as well. Um, you know, I'll, I'll end with, you know, I, again, I, I, st I, I made some, uh, some notes about what I was going to say, and then I was uh, thrilled by some of the, the discussion uh, as we get through. So I'm looking forward to the, the, the round the table. But you know, the current discussion, at least as we talk about the patent system and what changes need to be done, is about defining abuse. <laughs> what do you see as abuse? Um, and what is a troll? What is a PAE? Um, that's been uh, a theme running uh, through both my uh, federal career and my private career, and it's very hard to defend. Um, you need to be careful about making changes uh, to legislation or limiting regulatory rules uh, that devalue the very right that may have inspired the technology and the investment in the technology uh, in the first place. Um, so, uh, you know, as, as, a, as a caution, uh, this, this sounds strange coming from a legislative professional, but we need to be cautious about legislating. <laughs> uh, we need to take into account uh, not just all of the different players in the system, but frankly, um, all of the changes that come about just by having the dialogue, just by having the discussion. That list of issues I raised there on litigation reform, um, many of those issues have been addressed, uh, at least in part, uh, by the courts, um, by our implementation at the PTO of, of some of the AA provisions, uh, and then by the public and public efforts as well. So um, that's what I think I bring to the table. Uh, uh, not much uh, speculation on how else universities should use their patents, but eager to hear the conversation that follows. Thanks.